my gosh. Oh my gosh. Holy shit, you guys. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Good Lord. Thank you so much for joining me again. You know, this is my first stream back after being gone basically all month. I've been gone. How was February for you guys? February was pretty good for me, guys. Pretty February was pretty good for me, guys. I feel so pumped, so excited, so energetic, so excited to be back here on YouTube doing the damn thing. Welcome back to Tuesday Bro Tuesday. You know, this show used to be a live call-in show and I doubt it will ever, ever go back to that ever again. But what we do now is we take a few topics of the day and we just discuss them. One thing that I did definitely wanted to talk about was my trip to the Netherlands, my trip to Amsterdam. Lot of uh, political, social, societal differences going on between the United States and the Netherlands that I kind of wanted to talk about just a little bit. Mostly it's just going to be a little bit of a slideshow. Do you ever remember being kids and maybe I'm Maybe I'm aging myself right now by saying this, but do you remember, you ever remember being kids and then like your parents went away on a vacation or your your aunt, you know, went away on a vacation and then would come back and then you'd sit through like 15 to 20 trays of slides and you have to sit there and it's like a, a slide by slide, like these were the flowers outside of our hotel. This was a castle that was in a field in Scotland clunk and you go through the whole vacation. I'm not saying that's exactly what we're gonna be doing, but that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today. I brought my camera to the Netherlands with no real idea of what I was gonna do. I just started taking pictures and shooting videos. So I took a couple of those clips and I'm gonna be showing them to you today. And we're gonna talk a little bit about my time in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, we're gonna be talking a little bit about my time in Amsterdam. We're also gonna be covering a little bit of uh, current events, man. There has been, oh, hello Cherokee Vapor, hello, welcome to you. I don't have a, a what I've been vaping type of thing for Tuesday Bro Tuesday ever, but this is just the original recipe recoil on the Vapeworks.MMK Mech Mod. It's just a banging little setup. I love the new special edition recoils, and I love these on the uh, the MMKs. Someone would ask, so was asking me, oh, I got one of the new recoils. And I thought, fuck, that's cool. I'm glad you got one. Not a lot of people got them, and I'm glad you got one. And they were looking for a mech mod recommendation that wasn't a box. And so my, the first words out of my cloud's mouth were like, get the clutch, buy the clutch, just go buy the clutch. Even if you don't want a mech mod, just seriously, go buy the clutch. But then that got me thinking like, what other mech mods did I really like my recoil on? Vapeworks.mmk is one of them. This is loaded up with smacks. Lick it, cheers. Here's to you guys, holy crap. Holy crap, feels good to be back. You're on you're on vacation right now, crazy mofo killer. Well, enjoy your vacation, my man. Or my main my woman. I don't know, crazy mofo killer. You you could be anybody. I don't know what you are. You're just a crazy mofo killer. Yeah. Well, sometimes your mech battery's dying and then other times it's not dying. And this happens to be one of those times that it's just freaking dying. So yeah, lots been going on. I feel like I was off of Twitter. So my rule of being on vacation was just nothing. No social media, no Twitter, no Instagram, no nothing. I put a few couple little, little slideshow pictures up on Instagram just of some pictures I had been taking in Amsterdam, but I really wasn't like, on Instagram, on social media, on Twitter. I wasn't reading really a lot of news. The one thing that I did see, the one news item that I did see while I was in Amsterdam was uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren just tearing Mike Bloomberg a new asshole. I am so glad that so many people dislike Mike Bloomberg as much as I dislike Mike Bloomberg. And I think Mike Bloomberg is the first thing that we're gonna talk about today. Danielle Chunkmeister, haven't seen you in forever, my man. Danielle Jones is here, good Lord. Danielle might be the one and only moderator in the chat right now, but that's okay because we all, we're all, we're all very civil over here. There's never really any trouble over here unless it's from Chalupa Batman. I heard Chalupa Batman likes to cause trouble. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But holy crap, you guys, there's been so much crap going on. And yeah, I saw Elizabeth Warren tearing to Mike Bloomberg and that just, 
Like that just made me so happy. That made Eliz- that made Elizabeth Warren, who in my eyes, I don't care much for Elizabeth Warren. I never really cared much for Elizabeth Warren. But when I saw her tearing into Mike Bloomberg, man, her stock went up in my book, just a little bit. Not, not a lot, just a little bit. Seeing her really just stick it to Mike Bloomberg. And Mike Bloomberg says some pretty shitty things says some overall pretty shitty things. In fact, look at this quote right here. In fact, we're going to we're just going to listen to this uh we're going to listen to this little sound clip here. Let's listen to uh this is what he said. This is what he said on Twitter. We're going to Whoops. Whoops. There we go. See? That's how you know that I'm not uh that's how you know I'm not properly prepared for this uh for this vlog. Yeah, look at Mike Bloomberg. First of all, doesn't he just look confused all the time? Just like he doesn't really know what's going on. Like he walks into a room and he's like, well, I'm here. I'm probably here to control something. So just tell me what I need to control. He's an authoritarian and I can't, I can't stress this enough. I do believe that Mike Bloomberg would be the worst thing to happen to this country. I would take Donald Trump all day long. I would take four more years of Trump, no questions asked compared to Mike Bloomberg. So let's hear what Mike Bloomberg had to say. Oh, here he is again. Sorry, I doubled this up. No, I mean, think about it. You have predators, and the predators have missiles, and I have a list of everybody that has annoyed me or screwed me for the last 74 years. <laughs> oh, believe me. Okay, one more time while I'm not talking over it. Here's what Mike Bloomberg said. It, this is ridiculous. This is what an authoritarian dictator type of person would say. Listen closely. Would have been a great job. Did you? No, I mean, think about it. You have predators, and the predators have missiles, and I have a list of everybody that has annoyed me or screwed me for the last 74 years. <laughs> What? What? I have a list of everybody that's annoyed me or screwed me over for the last 74 years and then bang, 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 bang. That is crazy talk. That's what a dictator says. When I'm in power, everyone that's ever crossed me or screwed me over, he's basically saying I have, I would have access to missiles and I would basically just kill them. There we go. Let's, 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 thanks, Mike Bloomberg. Good Lord, thanks, Mike Bloomberg. I can't, I don't, I don't want to deal with Mike Bloomberg right now. I don't want to deal with Mike Bloomberg right now. But one thing that I do want to mention to everybody, yeah, let's, yeah, stop and frisk everyone. If Mike Bloomberg becomes president of the United States, it will be stop and frisk every American citizen ever in, in, on earth. No matter where you are on earth, even if you're in another country, Mike Bloomberg will come find you. I'm just chilling in Amsterdam and then ice shows up and pats me down. Look, we're here from Mike Bloomberg, stopping and frisking you. We heard you were in a foreign country, partaking in cannabis products. Still staying hydrated, hydro homies. So yeah, Mike Bloomberg, anybody but Bloomberg. I mean, not anybody but Bloomberg, but damn. Mike Bloomberg, out of control. Uh, one thing right off the top here that I'm trying to track down. Oh, 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 come on. I just had it. Where did you go? Why did you do this? Are you kidding me? Wow. Okay. I guess I truly and honestly actually did. Uh, drop this link. I had this page up and the link is just gone now. God damn it. There's a CASA call to action out. There's a CASA call to action out for uh, the congressional, for the federal flavor ban hearing. Vape prohibition is on the table in Congress. Technically a democratic socialist, which is different if you want to be technical. Yes. I, Mike Bloomberg, see, we're going to end up talking about politics today and I'm going to make enemies and I don't want to make enemies, but I don't want to. Mike Bloomberg is a, is a crazy person. Mike Bloomberg is an authoritarian zealot. 
He's just a despot. He's just a terrible person. He wants to control every aspect of your life besides having multiple, multiple NDAs uh, with women that he has sexually, mm, ooh, I don't know, question mark there. Besides those things, he, he's just straight up racist and he's a control freak and he wants, he wants to control you. He wants to control people. He wants people thinking and doing the things that he wants them to think and do. And it's crazy to me that Mike Bloomberg is even able to run for president considering how much media he owns. Do we not see like, you know, MSNBC kind of tearing apart the DNC? They're just self-destructing. MSNBC is owned by Bloomberg. It's crazy what he's trying to accomplish. Anyway, no, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. There is vaping prohibition on the table in Congress. This is H.R. 2339, Pallone out of New Jersey, which I know New Jersey, they are still having their fair share of awful legislation and awfulness. We're getting closer and closer and closer to that actual date of prohibition, but it's on the table in Congress. H.R. 2339, which would, among other things, ban vapor products and flav in flavors other than tobacco, a scheduled for, is scheduled for a vote by the full House of Representatives this Thursday. This Thursday. So what I'm going to do, first things first, this is boosh. This is going in the chat, 9,000. Maybe not. Maybe I don't know how to copy and paste things anymore. Maybe I've been so far away from a computer that I thought Control B was paste. Man, I, I feel real rusty right now, you guys. Real rusty right now. See, I don't believe that about Bernie Sanders. I don't believe that about Bernie Sanders. But I don't want to talk about Bernie Sanders. I don't want to talk about Bernie Sanders. I don't want to talk about Trump, even though there's these things are these, these are just things that are just gonna have to happen. So in the description to this video and in the in, in the live chat right there, I just posted a link. I'm going to post it again. If you don't watch out, there it is coming at you again. This is a CASA call to action. Just go take this call to action. It's going to take you no time. This legislation is being supported. Now, this is a nationwide flavor ban. H.R. 2339 is the nationwide flavor ban. This legislation is being supported by an army of Bloomberg-funded anti-harm reduction groups to the tune of $160 million. At the same time, it is likely a tax bill, H.R. 4742, which is attempting to enact tax parity between vapor products and combustible cigarettes, will also be taken up by the full house. Full house. These are things that are getting voted on very soon. And by very soon, thank you, Cloud Assassin. I appreciate that. You know, I've been, I've been trying to be less and less of a hat guy. It's hard when you're balding like I am, but I've been trying to be less and less of a hat guy. So again, it'll be in the description. It's already in the chat. You can click, you can take action, you can send a message. This is a, this is a nationwide flavor ban. This is, I mean, I'm not completely up to date with all of everything going on behind this flavor ban. I don't know how big of a chance it has. It's already moved through the system quite far enough to get to the full house vote this Thursday. So it's been moving through the process. I don't have an idea, like I said, of how well this bill is supported uh, bipartisanly. Is that even a word, Nick? I don't know how much support this bill has, but I know that it would be effective and it would probably be prudent and helpful to take the action, send a message to your representatives uh, in order to attempt to stop this. I mean, it's much easier. Uh, other advocates have told me this in the past and it's something that has really kind of stuck with me is it's much easier to get in front of this stuff and stop it before it goes through than to try to undo what has already been done. And that's already proving difficult with the Stanton Glance retracted papers. The damage from those papers has kind of been done and they've been retracted. You wanna talk about that? You wanna talk about Stanton Glance and the retraction of these papers? 
So I just really wanna stress this, HR 2339, this is bigger than all the HRs that we have ever, I mean, HR 2048, remember uh, back in 2016, HR, I think it was HR 2048, I think that's forever burned into my brain. Burned into my brain, yeah. Uh, J Jerry Perry, we got some uh, story time with Grim Green coming up. We're gonna read that article, I believe, from New uh, from Regas and Magazine. I haven't decided if I wanted to read the Vice one, which is also really good, or if we're gonna read the Reason one. But I think I think the Reason one. I think Guy Bentley at Reason. Uh, I think he did a little bit. Uh, I think he did a little bit better of a job there. Shane W, very gracious of you. Super chats are open and they get read kind of as we go along. Mike Bloomberg needs to get bent. Yeah, he wants adults to die because he doesn't like vaping. Okay, boomer, yo, yo. Yeah, that's the thing. He just really hates vaping. And I don't think, it's hard to tell where Mike Bloomberg's coming from. You know, most of the time it's a little bit transparent. I mean, you can see with people like Cuomo, Governor Cuomo, and I know I'm saying his name wrong. Governor Cuomo out there in New York, it's pretty clear his intentions are MSA money. I mean, the state, the New York state is probably, possibly going to default on these tobacco bonds. So you can kind of, there's always a little bit of transparency, even when they say, oh, it's for the kids, you know, we're going to ban vaping for the kids. We're going to ban these flavors because of the health toll that they have taken on the American public and our children. And they say it just very half-assly. And you know, they're kind of like, we just need that cigarette money. We just need that tobacco tax money, you guys. We just need that MSA money. With Bloomberg, there's no ulterior motive that I can see other than he's just a, a power-hungry lunatic. That's the only conclusion I can come to. He's just a power hungry lunatic. He just wants all the power and he wants to enact that power on you and decide what size sodas you can have, whether or not you'll be stopped and frisked based on the color of your skin. He wants power, he wants control, and that's all he wants. And that's all he wants. Colorado has a bill that would eliminate online vendors. Yeah, it's gonna be unnecessary. Um, it's gonna be unnecessary for states, I think, to have their own bans because a federal ban, when a federal ban comes, if and when the federal ban comes, it's not gonna matter in Colorado because HR 2339, uh, I believe is internet sales uh, as well. I mean, if I'm not crazy, let me double check what I'm reading here. Maybe I have things confused, but I believe this is an online internet sale ban as well. And here's the thing. This is something I was going to save for the vlog this Thursday, which we're definitely going to be doing a vlog this Thursday. Really excited about that. Really excited to get back into some hot vlogging action. But yeah, Eileen, he basically bought the DNC. I mean, that's, that's, that's a perfect way to put it. And here's, and here's the thing. The PMTAs are coming quickly, 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 quickly and nothing is changing. There's There's been no PMTA reform. There's been Secretary Azar saying these weird vague things about how he's going to help, you know, oh, we're gonna help these small businesses, we're gonna help the small businesses of this industry, you know, kind of guide their pathway through the PMTA, but it's not really been implemented yet. And even if he said this only a few months ago, we know the pace at which the federal government moves is that of a, I don't know, a snail, on top of a sloth, on top of an iceberg, slow. So even if Secretary Azar has these good intentions of, oh, we're gonna help these little businesses, we're gonna help all these little vape businesses get through the PMTA pathway, that's years away, maybe longer than that, because the federal government just moves so slowly. Light bear. They thought we were outlaws and fringe before. You can take my vape when you pry it from my warm live hand. <laughs> yes, from my live warm hand. Here's my predictions for the PMTA. Ready? You want to get into this? Uh, yeah, Utah HB uh, 375 is kind of scary. Full ban on all vaping. I thought that Utah already had a full ban on all, at least like public vaping, you couldn't even vape inside vape shops. How much, I don't know, like how much farther are they gonna take it? Don't even think about vaping, that's banned too. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about wrapping a coil. 
Don't even think about your favorite e-liquid. Thought police. If you even if you even think about vaping, we'll fine you. We'll, 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 you'll get fined. You'll get fined just for thinking about it. States don't necessarily have to follow federal law, but the government can withhold federal funding from states until they do follow federal law. Absolutely, Thomas Crow. Thank you for that. That little nugget of wisdom right there. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely 100%ly correct. I think, I think, I hate to think like this. I kind of think that May 2020 is just going to come and it's just going to happen. I think it's just going to happen. I think on, what is it, May 15th, 2020, I think that 90% of the industry is just suddenly going to become the black market. Everything that we use will all be black market. Every atomizer we buy, if you buy an atomizer off of recoilrda.com, that's the black market. Welcome to it. Everything will be the black market. All the liquids in every vape shop will all be black market e-liquids. Every atomizer in every vape shop, every atomizer on every site, every atomizer in your house will all be illicit products. They will be black market products. I think it's going to be just a jolt to the vape industry. Just a jolt. It is insane how they're over-regulating. It's completely insane how they're over-regulating. And I legitimately think that May 2020, I can't get this feeling out of my head that it's just going to happen. I think it's just going to happen. And we're all gonna be part of the black market. And you'll be in the black market, and you'll be in the black market, and I'll be in the black market, and all our liquids, black market smacks, black market, uh, what is this, QP designs, at least in the United States, it would be black market. Nowhere else in the world would it be black market, just in the United States. I know, this is really it, Furry Messiah. Welcome to the underground. We are going underground. We are going black market because... Because politicians who know better than you do want to protect you from the evils of flavored nicotine. Let's protect the United States citizens from the evils of flavored nicotine by creating literally the world's largest black market of flavored nicotine products. That's, that's the only conclusion that any of this is going to come to. Florida bill. All right, Julian, what do we got here? Florida bill HB 7089 goes to the floor tomorrow. Please stop by the state capitol building to show some support. Yeah, I mean, definitely if you're in Florida and you can go there. I mean, anytime you can go to a flavor ban, anytime you can go to a hearing, and if you can't make phone calls, and I know it just gets monotonous and it just gets tedious, and it feels like you know, like we say on the Culture of Clouds podcast, like we're just hiking up shit mountain. Just hiking right up shit mountain in deep shit. And it's harder and harder the closer you get to the top to try to like pull your foot out of the shit and make another step forward and pull yourself up shit mountain. That's just what is happening right now. And it's, it's, it's horrible. All of these bills... HB 7089 in Florida is not going to age well. All of the of the crazy craziness that's going on right now is not going to age well. All of this vapor madness, the war on nicotine, it's not going to age well. Black market 2020. I mean, it's insane to me that in I don't know, the more majority of the rest of the world vaping is allowed in most places, not just allowed, but even celebrated in some places. In New Zealand, it's celebrated. In Japan, it's celebrated. In the United Kingdom, it's celebrated. When I was in the Netherlands, loads of vape shops. Loads of vape shops, loads of vapors, loads of smokers, loads of icosers. Loads of icosers. But we're not quite there yet. We'll get to that. We'll get to Amsterdam in a second. But I did want to talk about these Stanton Glantz retracted papers. Oh, these studies getting retracted just makes me so happy. I love discrediting the myth-making machine. I love discrediting Stanton Glantz. And when this, when this study from Stanton Glantz first came out, when was this? 2019, I think it was. There was 
loads of people in the vape industry and even those outside of the vape industry, people like Paul Blair on Twitter, people like Charles Gardner on Twitter that looked at this study, this myocardial infarction study, and just, you knew right away, you could kind of read it and know that this was just hogwash, that this was what, what they call in the industry junk science, just complete garbage, not causation, not correlation, not really anything. Not really anything at all. So let me back up just a hair before we get to this, uh, before we get to this sort of uh, retracting of studies. There's a lot of backwards thinking in our government in regards to public health, the cloud assassin. Lots of backwards thinking. So much, it, so much. I know, and Glance still can't cop to it. All Glance does, in fact, uh, here we go. Let's just, uh, I think I'm gonna read the, uh, I think I'm gonna read this one. Oh, go away, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Mike Bloomberg? I'm Mike Bloomberg, Go away. Here's what we're gonna read. We're gonna read from, uh, we're gonna read from, uh, let me pull this down, Reason Magazine, Junk Science. Junk science, garbage science, death bait 2020 sort of science. Uh, did you see my question right before on the super chat? I did not, Daryl. I did not see uh, anything from you in the super chat. I did not. There was one here from uh, Discount02. Very gracious of you. Um, do you know why I pulled you over? No, you were thinking of vaping at that stop sign. I'm gonna need you to step out, please. Yeah. Look, it's, I'm not saying we're headed towards George Orwell's 1984, but I feel like we're kind of headed to George Orwell's 1984. Thought police, think about that. Think about something illegal? Nope, Tom Cruise and his, uh, and his <laughs> minority report, they're gonna come arrest you before you've done anything wrong. So here we go. Reason Foundation. Oh, the Reason Foundation. So this was not the Guy Bentley one uh, right before that comment. There, there. I promise you there is not one here from you, Daryl. I got one from Julian about Florida HB. I got Sean Wright saying West Virginia trying to do a $1 per mil vape tax. We need to fight for all our rights. A $1 per mil vape tax would be fucking terrible. Why would you tax? Why? Why on earth would you tax would you tax that highly the single most successful quit smoking aid that has ever existed? Let's take that. Let's take the most successful quit smoking aid that has ever existed in the history of recorded time and make it more expensive and less appealing than cigarettes. Yeah. Sure. Good call. Great call. I still didn't see it, Daryl. I, I seriously still didn't see it. Maybe we'll just uh, type it again, super chat it again. I, I, there is not a super chat from you. Uh, just joined. Have you covered the bill covering nationwide flavor ban on the 27th of this month? Yep, this Thursday. Uh, no, you cannot vape your strawberry e-liquid here. Try a delicious carcinogen flavor instead. Yeah, what does carcinogen taste like? What does carcinogen taste like? Who knows? Uh, didn't see a super chat from you though, Daryl, but I appreciate it. Have you covered the bill on the nationwide flavor ban on the 27th of this month? Yep, it was the first thing we did right out of the gate. I put the CASA call to action in the chat a few times and we'll have the CASA call to action as well in the description of this video. But right now, what we're going to move on to is Reason Magazine, the American Heart Association Journal, finally retracts study implying that e-cigarettes cause heart attacks before people use them. Yeah, no, you're not seeing things. That's the conclusion that Stanton Glantz and the University of San Francisco came to with their research. You didn't know? Vapors were having, were having heart attacks before they even vaped. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. So we have Brad Rodu, uh, and I'm not, I know I'm not saying his name right. I know Danielle's here. Am I saying it right? It's not even close. I'm not even, it's not even close. Brad Rodu, 
Eight months after the Journal of the American Heart Association published a study implying that e-cigarettes magically cause heart attacks before people even try them, it has retracted the article. The editors are concerned that the study's conclusion is unreliable. Well, holy shit. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that Stanton Glantz did something unreliable? Who would have thought? Based on data from the Population Assessment of Tobacco and Health, also known as PATH, Dharma and Dharma Bhatta and Stanton Glantz claim to find that e-cigarette use is an independent risk factor for having a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack, MI, myocardial infarction. And I only know that because I used to watch House MD and he would talk about myocardial infarctions all the time. Glantz, a longtime smoking activist and e-cigarette opponent who directs the Center for Tobacco Research Control and Education at the University of California, San Francisco, said the results provided more evidence that e-cigs cause heart attacks. Stanton Glantz. There's a lot. What's, what's going on in the chat there? We ban, Let's ban some people. I mean, shit. Shelby, I love sex tap photo. Sex tap photos? Well, there's a lot of sex photos going on in here. Let's get let's get all them out there, Danielle Jones and Thomas Crow. Just drop the band hammer. I mean, Trinity, I love sex tap photo. If you want to know about vaping or tobacco control politics, you're more than welcome to stick around. <laughs> but I have a feeling that's not why you're here. I love sax tap photo. Okay, yeah, stop that, McKenna. Kick rocks. Kick rocks or play nice. Kick rocks or play nice. Notwithstanding, the evidence that vaping is much less hazardous than smoking glance and bata, an epidemiologist at the center, concluded that e-cigarettes should not be promoted or prescribed as a less risky alternative to combustible cigarettes and should not be recommended for smoking cessation among people with or at risk of myocardial infarction. Oh, spam bots. Hey, we got some spam bots. Wow, that's great. Can we just ban them completely? Can we just ban McKenna completely? Uh... How do I, uh, how do I, I can make them a moderator. That's all I can do. That's all I can do, Danielle. Well, keep battling those bots for me, Danielle. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. But as University of Louisville tobacco researcher Brad Rodu pointed out last July, the analysis that Bata and Glance ran included former smokers who had heart attacks before they started vaping. Once those subjects were excluded, Rodu and University of Louisville economists, now see, this is the weirdest name I've ever had to pronounce, and I'm not going to say the full name. We're just calling this person Plurp. I'm not sure if you can see this name right here. Nataporn. I mean, that is a crazy name, and I've seen some crazy names. Nataporn Plurpenswat. Nataporn Plurpenswat. That's Nataporn Plurp and Swat. I, I find it hard to believe that that's an actual real name. And I don't mean any disrespect to Nataporn Plurp and Swat. But for right now, we're just going to call you Plurp. 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 So Rodu and Plurp. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how we're going to have to, <laughs> that's how we're going to have to address this. So Rodu and University of Louisville economist Plurp found the association described by Bada and Glantz disappeared. The main findings from the Bada glantz study are false and invalid. Rodu and Plurp wrote in a July 11th letter to the Journey of the American Heart Association. Their analysis was an indefensible breach of any reasonable standard for research on association or causation. In another letter, a week later, Rodu and Plurp urged the journal's editors to take appropriate action on this article, including a retraction. 11 days ago, I know, I look, it's an Indian name. I know that I'm not pronouncing it correctly. I don't mean any disrespect to Plurp. That's just as me as a dumb American that can't pronounce names or anything correctly. I just can't. I'm just going to have to call you Plurp. 
And that's just the way it is. And I don't mean any respect. I don't mean any disrespect. I have, I have nothing but respect for Rodu and Plurp for getting, for, for digging into this, for really getting into this. I think Plurp is an anti-vaping bot. Plurp sounds like a character on Rick and Morty, 8,000%. Eight thousand percent. So basically, the the American Heart Association spokeswoman came back and basically said, "Well, we went through the manuscript and gave it a comprehensive review, uh, and the process is now complete. And now the journey, the Journal of the American Heart Association, retracted the paper, retracted the paper, which is interesting to me because I didn't see it on Twitter. Granted, I haven't been on Twitter, but." I haven't seen it on Twitter. No, n- there was no interaction. I didn't see other people retweeting it or liking it. I didn't see any announcement from the American Heart Association saying, hey, look, guys, our entire quit lying campaign was based on this really bad study that Stanton Glantz did, and now we've retracted that article. So our quit lying campaign kind of is just dead in the water. They left the quit lying campaign up and I didn't see anything about the retraction of this particular study. And so uh, maybe we need to talk to the American Heart Association on Twitter, ask them why they haven't announced or promoted that the information and data that they were giving out earlier was completely, completely, completely false and wrong and that the study has since been retracted. Haven't seen that. Uh, YouTube is not receiving enough video to mainstream smooth viewing and such viewers will experience buffering. Okay, sorry, apparently I'm having some buffering issues or some streaming issues. So it might be, uh, it might be choppy for a little bit there. It might be choppy for a little bit there. So let's wrap this up. Let's wrap this little part up here. I'm not going to read this whole thing, uh, from the American Heart Association. Um, basically it comes down to, they were asked to fix this. They didn't fix it in time to publish it. They basically just went, Oh, sorry, we published this, uh, but kind of by accident, I guess, or on purpose without your recommendations or anything like that. And Stanton Glantz and his assistant, Dr. Bada, they can't even go back and, and fix it because they don't have access to that data anymore. Well, isn't that, that's just super convenient. That's just super convenient. Hey, can you guys retract this? Can you, uh, can you, can you, uh, you know, correct this? Nope, you can't, we don't have that data anymore. Sorry. Man, that just seems like the biggest cop out of all time. Even before publication, in other words, Journey of American Heart Association editors and reviewers recognized that there was a logical problem with asserting a casual link between e-cigarette use and heart attacks on cases that predated e-cigarette use. They asked Bada and Glantz to address that critical issue and the authors failed to do so, even though the PATH database included the necessary information. Journey of American Heart, Journal of American Heart Association published the study anyway. And Bada and Glantz say they can't do corrective analysis now because they no longer have access to the PATH database. That just seems pretty slip hood peer review and editorial process, doesn't it? I suspect the Journal of the American Heart Association would have been a bit more careful with a study that found vaping prevents heart attacks by helping smokers quit. It's not just that. It's not, and so there's going to be a link here. Here, I'll put this link in the chat right now. Sounds, looks like the moderators are having a really fun time in the chat right now. Stacy, sex tape photo um, is really, ca- <laughs> really, ca- really causing some problems here. Really causing some problems here. The craziest thing about this, the craziest thing about this is the this study has been retracted. This particular study has been retracted, but Rodu's not Rodu's not satisfied by just this being retracted. He wants he wants Stanton Glance 
and the University of California, San Francisco to actually really be looked into and investigated for a lot of the other studies and papers that they have done. Remember the study that showed that Stanton Glantz did that showed that oh, vaping definitely is a gateway, definitely a gateway to cigarette smoking. And he didn't really need to prove it or anything. He just had his study and everybody believes Stanton Glantz's garbage, garbage study. Well, that's being challenged as well. Uh, there is a USA Today article that goes into, uh, shockingly, a little bit more in depth. You know, USA Today, it doesn't even seem like they're, uh, you know, it seems like they're like bite sized news. This is actually pretty in depth. Um, this is actually pretty in depth. HR 2339 federal flavor ban is getting voted on this week. Uh. Pardon me, Thursday, this Thursday. We got to get to Casa. We got to do that call to action. We got to get on Twitter. We got to make our voices heard. I think it's craziness. I think it's insanity that it's going to be voted on this Thursday. And if it gets voted on this Thursday, I don't believe it's the final step for this particular bill, but it is one step closer. And Green Eyed Lady, I completely, completely agree with you. Glance should be officially and publicly reprimanded by the appropriate academic regulatory agency. No more research money for Glance and his evil, evil cronies. Glance, of course, just defends his stance into the ground, into the ground. USA Today, when we contacted uh, Glance, we, it says, when contacted by USA Today for comment, Glance referenced his blog post and pointed to Abrams' connection to the Philip Morris Foundation for a Smoke-Free America and what he said were industry connections other than academics. Abrams' response... This is typical modus operandi, blaming everyone but himself, doubling down on supporting the paper, and smearing his critics as e-cig interests. I would say Professor Glantz has not taken the retraction with good grace. Not taken the retraction with good grace. Stanton Glantz is just whining and crying and screaming. And what did you expect, though, really, when you put out so much garbage? So much garbage not just the myocardial infarction paper, but the gateway paper as well, which both of these papers are what legislators are using to regulate vaping. Our own Jerome Adams, Surgeon General, Doctor of the Nation, Jerome Adams has cited Stanton Glantz papers, retracted Stanton Glantz papers, for his argument that vaping is just the worst, just the worst thing that's ever happened to the country. All these adult smokers quitting cigarettes, can you fucking believe it? Where's Stanton Glantz? We need some anti-vaping. Stanton Glantz, you want, a, you, want a pa you want a gateway effect? Look, we gotta demonize vaping somehow. You want a gateway effect or not? Well, sure, I'd love to have a gateway effect of vaping into smoking. Let's get Stanton Glantz. Stanton Glantz, we need a, a study that shows that vaping can lead to cigarette smoking. Say no more, fam. Stanton Glantz has got you. Stan, Stan, the garbage man. Just hauling around his big dump truck of junk science. Junk science. So, David Abrams, he's going after Glantz. I love scientists fighting each other. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. And it's not just Abrams, and it's not just Oronsky from NYU. It's a lot of, of, uh, of scientists. A lot of people are basically saying, look what the fuck is going on with Stanton Glantz. Like, how, how, how are these published right now? How are these, how are these papers published right now? So I'm going to post the link in the description to, uh, to everything that I just talked about. The, uh, the USA Today article. Uh, I'll post a link to the Vi to the Vice article, although I haven't read it at all. Brad Rodu, JAHA, there are serious problems with the peer review process and the reluctance of journals to retract invalid work. Uh, let's see. No, nah, I haven't read this whole thing, but this is a good one too. I'm in the description of this video. I'm going to put the Vice article. I'm going to put the USA Today article, and I'm going to put the... Uh, this one from uh, Helio.com, page 
paper on e-cigarette use and MI risk retracted. Officially, officially retracted. I'll put that call to action down in the description as well. And one of the things that I thought was, I don't know, stop calling them scientists. Well, here's the thing. You can call them scientists because they are scientists. They're just poor scientists. You know what I mean? It's like if you, if I, if I was a painter, right? If I was a painter and I painted paintings, I would be a painter and you could call me a painter, but my paintings would be bad. <laughs> just terrible. Probably at first. They would just be bad. So he is still a scientist. He's just a bad scientist. And when good scientists call out bad scientists for their junk science, ah, great, great. Bring it on. This is only going to yield better data. This is only going to yield closer to the truth than we have gotten before. Then we have come, then we've gotten to this far. The, the, this far, thus farly. Nope, wrong. Thus far. And yeah, exactly. Paintings can never be bad. They're just stylized, right? Oh, this is my stylized, uh, this is my stylized painting of a cow. Looks nothing like a cow. Well, I said it's stylized, you know? I'm an artist. You can't judge me. <laughs> needless to say, needless to say, I got back to the United States and I feel like I was just thrown straight back into the trenches. There's so much shit going on. There's federal flavor bans. There's flavor bans literally on the books in every state. I got this in the mail today. I got this in the mail today. This is anti, this is some, uh, this is some political propaganda. We're trying to get rid of school board member, member Scott Schlemerson here in, uh, in Los Angeles because he invested money in Altria. And uh, what we have here is we have the guy. This is the guy we're trying to get rid of. Oh, picture of a kid vaping. Oh, picture of a kid in a hospital. Picture of a kid in a hospital. And this, this political propaganda that I got in the mail because we're trying to take down school board member Scott Schlemerson, which this actually had the opposite effect on me. When I vote in Los Angeles County and I vote on the local ballot, I'm voting for Scott Schlemerson, 100%. He's clearly uh, knows what vaping is. He knows what harm reduction is. What he invests his money in is up to him. And I think it is insanely disingenuous to show a picture of the guy, show a picture of a kid vaping, and then show a picture of a kid in a hospital with an oxygen mask on, keeping in mind that legal nicotine vaping has sent nobody to the hospital, nobody to the hospital. And even this stupid little political ad that I got in the mail still mentions the, uh, oh, lung injuries, Youths are going to the hospital with lung injuries. Meanwhile, Scott Schlemerson is investing in Altria. These things have nothing to do with each other, but they're being conflated still, even in political propaganda mailers that I get in the mail. So me, for me, I'm definitely voting for Scott Schlemerson. I think he is an important, critical member of the Los Angeles County School Board. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Here, I'll cover up my address. They posted that, they, this is the cover of that Time Magazine. Apparently, Scott Schlemerson can't read. Well, fucking apparently you can't either because that Time Magazine article was garbage. Garbage, it is. It's all trigger photos. It's all fear mongering. Oh my gosh. No rage sweat though. We're gonna keep the rage sweat down a little bit. Let me have a little bit of this. Uh, this has kind of become my favorite liquid. I kind of might like it a little bit more than Pony on Acid. It's the same bottle of Smacks that looks like all the bottles of Smacks, except this is called Secret Crush. It is their strawberry lemonade. And God damn it, Scott Schlemerson be damned. I love vape and flavors. Hypocrites. It's not even interesting times. Chris, interesting times interesting times I could deal with. This is clown world. This is clown world. Could you imagine if 
This was, uh, I don't know, about seat belts or helmets, right? Think about something else that's a harm reduction. School board's member Scott Schlemerson invested in motorcycle helmets, despite the evidence showing that motorcycle helmets only cause more accidents. Scott Schlemerson is a terrible person. <laughs> Love that. Love that. So I, real quickly, this, uh, this freaking USA Today article, which I'll be, uh, I'm noticing you, Thomas Power. You want me to notice you? Consider yourself noticed, my man. So here's a link to the USA Today article. And, and what's great is at the end of this USA Today article where they just continuously slam Stanton Glantz and point out everything that Stanton Glantz has done wrong, you know, misrepresented the numbers, misrepresented data, the effects of vaping, you know, uh, the this correlation between MIs and vaping just disappeared. The gateway effect, according to Stanton Glantz's own data, just completely disappeared. They're just raking Stanton Glantz over the coals, right? And at the very end, at the very, very end, the last thing it says is, Vaping is not 100% safe with a link to another article that says vaping increases risk of chronic lung disease by 30% new study says. Holy shit. Okay. So I just got done reading this, that Stanton Glantz and his anti-vaping studies are hogwash, what we would call junk science. But then at the bottom, Chronic lung disease? Vaping increases chronic lung disease by 30%? Okay, well, let's click on that. What is this? Holy shit. Vaping is not safe. Vaping increases the risk of chronic lung disease by 30% according to a new study. Do you know where this new study came from? I'll let anybody guess. Stanton fucking Glance and the San Francisco University of San Francisco. California University of San Francisco and Stanton Glantz published this study that they link to right after trashing Glantz and saying that all of his vaping studies have basically just been junk science. But here's some more junk science. Here, have some more. Thanks, USA Today. Appreciate that. Hopefully, the readers of that article will get down to the bottom, maybe click over to this and see that it's a study by Stanton fucking glance, the person in the previous article who was just being raked over the coals by other scientists for publishing junk science. And now we're going to read another article about all of the junk science that Stanton Glantz has put out. I cannot believe that. I can't believe that. No, I'm not joking. I'm not joking, my man. It's down there at the bottom. But even after all this, remember, vaping is not 100% safe and it increases the risk of chronic lung disease by 30%. So says Stanton Glantz, the guy that we just raked over the coals. Read some more, read some more junk science. Unreal USA Today. Unreal USA Today. That just... Uh, that just completely blew me away. Of course, uh, the Journal of the American Heart Association has their own sort of... Uh, their own sort of post, uh, article, whatever you want to call it, uh, press release retraction of the electronic cigarette use and myocardial and function among adults in the U.S. population assessment, tobacco and health. They have their own retraction on their own website that you do have to actually dig to try to get through, but I'm going to post it here in the chat. I'm going to post it as well in the description of this video, but uh, man, lots going on. Lots going on. Stanton Glantz. Brad Rodu, the other guy from NYU, <laughs> Twilight Zone, right? It's all Jewel's fault. It's not all Jewel's fault. Look, I don't like Jewel as a company. Their products are probably have probably saved a lot of smokers and a lot, a lot of smokers. But we can't. The Jewel just can't be the internal, the eternal boogeyman. At some point, we have to come to the conclusion that sure, Jewel. 
They got bought by a, a big tobacco company for the most part. Uh, they pre-banned themselves. They just went along with everything that the administration was saying. They support flavor bans. It's pretty clear that they don't care. They don't care about harm reduction. They don't care. They've helped a lot of people. Jewel's helped a lot of people. And we can't just have Jewel be the boogeyman. We can't have Jewel be the boogeyman for everyone. Hi, Grim Green. Tom from the Netherlands. Here in the Netherlands, it is said that COPD comes from vaping, not to believing anyway. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's yeah, <laughs> yes. In the Netherlands, do they really say that COPD comes from vaping? So that's a great segue, actually. Let's talk about the Netherlands a little bit. Tom, let's talk about the Netherlands a little bit. And now I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm any sort of uh, expert on the the policies and political goings on of the Netherlands. I know that they're a constitutional monarchy. I know that they have a prime minister. I know that they have like upwards of 20 different political parties that you can be a part of and and vote for regardless of of who's uh who's who's prime minister currently or who's an upcoming prime minister. You don't abdicate being a prime minister, I think, unless you leave or die or something like this. So the current prime minister of the Netherlands, I can't recall his name. Uh, He's been prime minister for about a decade now, for about a decade in the Netherlands. Um, One of the things that I always hear about uh, Europe and the Netherlands is like, oh, socialism, you know, right? Socialists bunch of socialists up there. No freedom. They don't have freedom like we have in the United States. Well, let me tell you, they don't really have freedom like we have in the United States, but it's a completely different, I've never experienced anything like this. I've never experienced anything like this in all of my travels. And I've been all over, literally all over the world, all over the world. All of my travels like this, I've never experienced a place like the Netherlands. I've never experienced a place like Amsterdam. It's the cleanest city I may have ever been in in my entire life. It makes some U.S. cities look like actual garbage dumps. It makes downtown Los Angeles look like some Orwellian fucking third world authoritarian weird prison planet by comparison. Walking around the streets of Amsterdam, it's just clean everywhere. I mean, everywhere is clean. They have one garbage collection day that we that we experienced where there was lots of garbage everywhere, but it was picked up within a few hours. Clean everywhere. No homeless anywhere. No homeless anywhere in Amsterdam. Not even when we walked into like the maybe the little shadier parts of Amsterdam, right? No trouble, no homeless. Everybody's in a great mood. The, the, The quality of life in the Netherlands is very, very high. Everybody seems very contented over in the Netherlands. They have the, the, the cleanest, fastest public transportation that I've ever used in my entire life all provided by the federal government. You pay more taxes, but you know what you get? You get cheap, fast, and obscenely clean and efficient public transportation. Obscenely clean and fast and efficient. And I've been on all sorts of public transportation all over the world. I mean, the Paris Metro, great, fast, scary, dirty. New York subway, efficient, scary, dirty, London Underground, quick, very efficient, not really super scary, kind of a little bit dirty. The the public transportation system in Amsterdam, the, the metro, unreal. It blew my mind. I legitimately felt like I had gone forward in time. You know, there's times in the United States where I feel like we're literally just going backwards in time. But when I got to the Netherlands, Besides all of the architecture being from been before the United States was a country, I felt like I had, st- I didn't try any magic truffles, capital H. Don't worry, we're going to talk about cannabis in a second. I felt like I had stepped into the future. 
you know, I had made this joke. I've been trying, you know, over the course of the years, I've been working on my tight five, you know, just a little bit of a stand up bit, right? And I had a bit not too long ago that I didn't think was very funny, but I wish we could just make it look like the future a little bit more. You know, I realize we're not gonna get flying cars. We're not gonna get laser blasters. We're not gonna get lightsabers. We're not gonna get teleporting. We're not gonna get light speed. We're not gonna get interdimensional travel. We're not gonna get a lot of these things. And I'm okay with that, but can we at least make it look a little bit more futuristic around here? You know, maybe some uh, neon curbs. You know, like make it look a little Blade Runnery. Have some neon curbs. Have some lights. Have some futuristic displays and architecture, and just kind of make it feel a little bit more like the future. I legitimately felt like when I went to the Netherlands that I had walked into the future. I got on this public transport and it was the cleanest thing I had ever seen. It was like getting on a spaceship. I just booped my little card and a little light went, whoa, welcome, whoa, welcome. Sat down in the cleanest seat I've ever sat on. The doors have these like running LED neon lights that are, they they fade, it's like green and the doors open with green stripes. Felt futuristic as shit. I felt like I was getting in a Star Trek shuttlecraft. When the doors are gonna close, they they strike, they go from green, they fade to red, it goes to red, and then they whoop shut, and then the red stripe goes away. I felt like I went into the future with how clean, fast, and efficient this public transportation was, and it makes me insane that we don't have anything like that in the United States. It makes me insane that we don't have anything like that in Los Angeles. All we have in Los Angeles is just the concrete freeways of doom. I mean, there's some spots on the I-5 when you get down into Orange County, it's like 12 lanes across and still packed with traffic. It's un- unreal to me. I mean, it was such a culture shock, such a culture change. It's a great country, great country, great country, unbelievable country. My, my buddy Adam and I had so many cannabis fueled political discussions in the Netherlands, it, it blew me away. I mean, we had, there were deep, deep conversations. Uh, absolutely correct, Grim Green, but we must also be careful that we do not go the wrong way. For example, 10 mil e-liquid is a max that must be sold is also, oh yeah, 10 mils. So the Netherlands does fall under the TPD there. And here's what I noticed being in the Netherlands No, the cable cars in San Francisco are a joke. Have you ever ridden the cable cars in San Francisco? They're not a method of transportation. It's a tourist trap. They go down like two streets and they're ridiculous and expensive to maintain and they're always breaking down. The cable cars in San Francisco aren't aren't transportation. You're not gonna go, oh, I got a doctor's appointment uptown. Uh, I'm gonna, I gotta, I gotta, doctor's appointment uptown, I better jump on my San Francisco cable car to get there in time. Not a chance. You know how long I waited in line as a tourist to ride the cable car? Probably an hour and a half, at least an hour and a half, just to get tickets. And then you wait in line and you finally get on a cable car and you ride it all the way out to like, uh, you know, the Embarcadero and all the way back. And it's like a touristy thing. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, I'm not trying to... It was just such a freaking culture shock there. Here's what I noticed as far as uh, Real Jim Shady, very gracious of you. Did he get? Any, did you get any sweet European high-end vape gear? Uh, no, I did not. I definitely did not. But I bought a few liquids while I was there uh, because I wanted something a little higher milligram. I only brought six milligram with me. I know it was Sebastian. I'm just giving you a hard time. That's just what I do. We just pl- we j- we can just play off each other. That's fine, Sebastian. I don't. I don't I mean to upset you or anything. I knew it was a joke. (laughs) I knew it was a joke and I ran with it because those cable cars, they accomplish close to nothing other than, than just eating up tourists, eating them up, eating up their money out of their wallets. Yeah. Light rail, Oklahoma. I rode a light rail in uh, Seattle too. That was really super great and efficient. It's crazy to me that we don't have those anywhere. I don't like owning a car, especially in Los Angeles. It's such a drivey town. It's like, all right, here we go. We got to drive to 
Beverly Hills, we got to go over the fucking 405 and sit on that parking lot for 45 minutes while we travel six miles. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I like having a car. I like being able to have to drive somewhere. But if I could walk a few blocks and get on a, a on a really clean, fast train, public transport that would just whisk me away to downtown or whisk me away to Orange County or whisk me over to Beverly Hills, how 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 would you say no to that? How would you how would you say no, no, I don't want that. I would rather sit in my car for an hour to go six miles in a parking lot that is the 405. How could you even, I missed you Dash Vapes. How could you even say that? (laughs) Nick, I know, I need a motorcycle. I need a motorcycle like I need a hole in the head. First of all, my wife would definitely disown me and divorce me if I bought a motorcycle. I am legitimately terrified of motorcycles. And that's just a thing. I I would love to learn how to ride a motorcycle. I can ride a bicycle, does that count? 100% of the horrible accidents I see in Los Angeles are always because of motorcycles. Not because of motorcycles, but involved motorcycles. Involved with motorcycles. Shit, maybe I'll just buy a motorcycle. Fuck it, I'll just buy a motorcycle. Um, Drivers in LA are really, really bad. Really very terribly bad. And it's not that they're bad drivers. And I don't know why I'm going on a tangent about Los Angeles traffic right now. It's not that they're bad drivers. It's that driving here will just infuriate you to no end. You could get in your car with like a fresh podcast, clean, big, cold bottle of water, your favorite vape, the air conditioning on. You could be in the best mood possible. You'd be like, nope, I'm just gonna zip over to the valley. Go go right up the 101 through Studio City. That drive will turn you into a murdering psychopath. Five minutes into your drive, you'll be yelling at people. You'll be speeding. You'll be cutting people off because they cut you off. You just turn into a crazy person and it just makes you furious and you get to your destination and you're like, I, f- I guess I'm here. At what a fucking cost though. It just turns you into a terrible person. So it's not that there's bad drivers here. It's that I think there's good drivers here. It's just that everyone's angry. Everyone's angry. Californians are bad drivers. Okay, I accept that. I accept that. Kent called me a bad driver uh, many, many times. Might have almost killed him a couple times. It's no big deal. So let's talk about Amsterdam real quick. I got some videos I wanted to share with you. So uh, this is this is my room. This is where I stayed in Amsterdam. We got a great, great Airbnb. By the way, shout out to Jay Hayes. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you, man. As well as Dash Vapes. Dash, Dave, I love you. Nick, when I come to Cali, I'll toss you on the back of mine. Uh, make your, okay. I didn't know you were that gray. Yeah, looks like I, I, I'm, I'm embracing it. I'm just going gray, you know? I started this when I was a ripe young 30 year old. And now I'm 42. YouTube, my subscribers on YouTube have literally just watched me age <laughs> from a young, optimistic, little grim green. Hey guys, I've, I found vaping. Here's how I vape. Look at this great atomizer. Let's all vape together and fucking hold hands and sing Kumbaya. And I was just a naive little, this will last forever because vaping is great and it's going to help so many people and nothing could possibly go wrong. Fast forward about a decade. I got gray hair, rage sweat, and I hate everybody. <laughs> That's just where we, oh, too soon, Jesse. Oh, Kobe jokes. That's too soon. That's too soon, my man. That, that is, that, that, that's too soon. But seriously, Jay Hayes, if you come to California, I'll jump on the back of that hog with you. Wrap my arms around your, around your big neck. And we'll just go jetting down the Sunset Strip. Just gun it. No, don't remove it, Jay Hayes. Embrace it. Embrace the gray. Don't try to run from yourself. Don't try to run from your roots. You're gray like me. We need to embrace it. Hashtag gray hair gang. Bring it on. Bring it on. Okay, so we stayed at a really cool Airbnb. This is gonna begin the slideshow portion. 
Unless you wanted to hear from Bloomberg again about how he would kill all of his enemies with missiles. No? All right. So let's just talk about this. This is my room in Amsterdam. Matt from SMM is here. Okay, so Matt, you think I look even better now? <laughs> Appreciate that, Matt. You just gave a little boost, a uh, little boost to my confidence right there. Yeah, I'm trying to be less of a hat guy. Talked about this earlier. Just trying to be less of a hat guy. You know, I'm 42. It comes to a point where it's like, might be time to ditch the snap back. Ah, might be time to ditch the snap back. We'll see. Okay, so I have a few things to talk about still about Amsterdam. So first, let me show you this. I'll show you a slide and then we'll talk about some stuff. This was my room. We rented an Airbnb and I just had what I can only assume was like the little kid's room. Like it was a mattress on the ground in the attic. And it, you had to go up these nightmare stairs to get there. In fact, I got more stair footage for you later. But this was my room at the Airbnb. Way at the top of the Airbnb. Just in like this little, yep, little A-frame with the mattress on the ground. And then outside there was our little smoking patio. The Airbnb owner guy told us on the phone, he said, if you guys are gonna smoke, like if you're gonna smoke, if you're gonna smoke weed, just go up you know, to the top, go up to the, to the deck patio on top. There's a deck on the roof and you can go up there. These are the death stairs down from my, uh, down from my little perched cubby. And let me tell you, coming down those stairs, after you've had some shed time in your system, <laughs> it's terrifying, terrifying. So that was my room. So here's what I noticed. Uh, let me show you this night river shot. This was just a, this is just a shot of Amsterdam at night across one of the canals. I just thought it looked really pretty. So I set up my camera, opened the ISO way up, opened the shutter all the way, you know, got this great shot. It was just so calm and peaceful and one thing that I noticed in Amsterdam is there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of cigarette smoking going on in Amsterdam. Lots and lots of cigarette smoking. I did see like occasional vapors kind of here and there, some vapors here and there, but it was only ever in big crowds when I saw like, you know, a puff come off the crowd. And I went, oh, that guy's definitely vaping. Or I'd see people passing me like on the street and they're just walking and I'd see in their hand, it's like, oh, that guy's got a Vinci. Oh, that guy's got this. Oh, that guy's got that. There's, there are some vapors, but I literally, I noticed way more cigarette smokers. The whole town smelled a little bit like cigarettes. There was just this, like a cigarette odor kind of everywhere. Maybe it's people smoking weed on the streets. Maybe it's cigarettes, but there's just a lot of cigarettes. There was actually an Icos store, maybe three blocks from our Airbnb, three Amsterdam canal miles. We call them canal blocks or CBs. Maybe two or three CBs up, there was an Icos store that we didn't go into, but it was kind of this weird thing. Like after I noticed the Icos store, I kind of noticed a lot of people using Icos. Um, we were standing outside in the rain, trying to get directions on our Google Maps. And I saw a dude who was, I think, working at a restaurant. He kind of walks out this side door into this alley and goes through the whole Icos ritual like he was stepping out to have a cigarette, you know? He like grabs the heats out, grabs the heat, puts it in his mouth, grabs the Icos out, punk, kind of loads it up, starts it, and then just sit there and, and vaped his little Icos, heated up his little Icos and, and used it like a cigarette. When it was done, he just kind of threw the butt on the ground, packed up the Icos and went back to work. Icos use there is high. And I, I think it's only going to get higher. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say that the majority of people smoke there. The second biggest majority use the Icos and then a very small segment uses traditional nicotine vapor products. I went to a, a great vape shop Man, I wish I had the picture. They had a picture of Bob Marley with a big mod on the inside of this vape shop. Um, and I just went in, I was looking for some juice. I picked up three 10 mils, blew through them pretty quickly, but it was a cool little shop. It was right there in a real touristy spot. And I noticed a bunch of vape shops in Amsterdam. One Ico store that I saw, but multiple vape shops. And even with Ico stores and all these vape shops, a lot of cigarette smoking. 
still a lot of cigarette smoking going on there. Um, really interesting. You know, it just kind of makes you think. You know, I was just thinking like, I wonder what the market is here. You know, the business side of me kicked in and I went, well, I want, you know, I wonder what the market is here. I wonder what the liquids they sell here. You know, I wonder what types of devices sell well in the Netherlands. If there's vapors in the Netherlands that are really into like the hobbyist side of it, like maybe they're rocking stacked tube mechs from the comfort of their own homes and not out in public. It just, it raised so many, just raised so many questions. Flavors are nothing. Icos is flavored. Icos, Icos is flavored. I have a black currant flavored heat sticks for the Icos. They're flavored. So uh, what else? Oh, here's just some boats. This is, uh, I think, that same area during the daytime. And the, you know, the canal boats, they have these, uh, these canal boats that kind of just go up and down. Some of them you can get restaurants. There's one where you can just bring a bunch of cannabis with you and smoke with a bunch of people on the indoors in this boat, which I wish we would have done. And one thing that that doesn't really show you is how small everything is. Like these boats that line the canals, they're just tiny little boats and these cars along the side of the road, they're just tiny little cars. They're small little cars because they drive on these small little streets and they share these small little streets with bicycles. Everybody, everybody rides a bike there. I've never seen so many bicycle people. And they are, look, they know the rules of the road and if you get in their way, you're gonna get elbowed. That's just the way it is. You get elbowed, you get yelled at, you get ding, 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 and the little bike bells, ding, 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 ding. The first night there, we were walking around and we were like bumping into people and I'm sorry, I don't, I, the car, oh, car, you know, what bicycle? And I'm just like, so we're doing something wrong here. We're not, we're not going with the flow of the city. Like we were literally just doing everything wrong. So we had some cannabis and I figured it out. I figured out Amsterdam. I figured out where you need to walk. I figured out where the, where the roads are, where the cars are coming from. Oh, if the road's marked like this, that means it's a two-way. So you're gonna have cars coming one way, bikes coming the other. You're gonna have bikes coming this way. You need to cross here. You need to stay to the left. You need to pass on the right. I figured it out. I figured out the city thanks to weed. And speaking of cannabis, speaking of cannabis, what... Shouldn't he be called glands as in male genitalia? Stanton glands. <laughs> Let me do some of these super chats before I tell you about the cannabis in, uh, in Amsterdam because it's not very good. I just want you to know that. Don't, don't think you're going to plan some epic Amsterdam trip and you're going to get some top choice flour. You're not and it's going to be expensive. Okay. Uh, where were we in the super chat here? Florida bill, discount, Alex, Steve, as far as I'm aware of here in Pennsylvania, nothing is going in the way of local bands. I haven't heard anything out of Pennsylvania, but I know that PA does, they have something. They have like a 40% wholesale tax in PA. Uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure. Watching in my vape shop with all my customers live. So uh, <laughs> so good to have you back on. Uh, we'll all come to my shop for Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. Look, uh, let's fly. I'll fly out to Pennsylvania or wherever you are, Eric. You're not in Pennsylvania. We'll just do a live stream. We'll just do a Tuesday, bro, Tuesday live from the shop. How fun would that be? Matt Sinister, very gracious of you. Vaping my recently bought Kali RDA on top of the Odin dripping some vanilla cheesecake. The only thing sweeter would be a powerbomb Bloomberg. <laughs> Matt Sinister. I don't know if all of my subscribers have met Matt Sinister. Matt Sinister is actually a professional wrestler. He has been in the ring. He has jumped off the turnbuckles. He has power bombed people through tables. I've seen it happen. He's a large, intimidating Matt Sinister. I would pay hundreds of dollars, upwards of hundreds of dollars to see Matt Sinister power bomb Mike Bloomberg like through a table, like just straight up Cactus Jack style, like with a bag of thumbtacks on top of the table. I would pay money to see that. Jim Bubba, very gracious of you. Have you seen that awful street magic commercial? I haven't, but I've been avoiding most everything. We haven't watched any uh, TV or television or anything like that. I have to watch the Democratic debate tonight. 
and that's the thing that I'm not looking forward to. Street Magic. Haven't seen the awful Street Magic commercial. I will check it out. Grant, very gracious of you. Good to see you back on the YouTube. Hope the family is doing well and let's keep on vaping. It feels good to be back, Grant. I really appreciate it. It's been a very, very warm welcome. I feel very, very motivated, very energized uh, to be back here on YouTube. The family is doing as well as we can. And damn it, yeah, let's keep on vaping. Uh, nope, I didn't get any sweet high-end vape gear while I was there, sorry. Uh, need falling down shirt? What, Silver Paradox? Need falling down shirt. I'm gonna need you to clarify uh, just a little bit of what you mean by that. Uh, the T, the Leet King? Did you, are you really the Leet King? Well, shout out to you, Leet King, I appreciate it. Cheers to LA traffic and sitting on the 405, the 101, the 10, and the 5 freeway for a couple of dozen of hours each week. Yeah, you know what interchange, while I have a local here, the interchange in the valley from the 101 to the 134 to Pasadena can suck dick. I hate that area. I avoid it at all costs, and sometimes I forget, and I find myself on the 101 going east, and I'm like, oh, this is the 134 interchange to Pasadena. I'm gonna be sitting here for fucking ever. Sorry, I had just had to vent to someone who would understand what that means. Fluffs Travels, very gracious of you. Grim, have you seen the anti-vape ads that come on before videos? I've seen three different ones and they were all played before I watched a vape vid. I haven't, but I don't find that terribly shocking that that's going on. I'm not surprised to see anti-vaping nonsense on YouTube, especially before vape videos. Doesn't, I uh, just not, uh, not shocking to me in any way. So let me show you this little clip right here. This is a dumb clip. That's a cool church over there. At least I think that's a church. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy on the motorcycle scared me. Are you a church? That's a church. So that's some very shaky camera work from uh, from the Netherlands. So I brought my camera there with no rhyme or reason. I just started shooting stuff. Los Palos, do we have a proposed release date for the new RTA? Nope. I'm going to tell you what I've been telling everybody. Soon. Soon. The Californians. Soon. Let's say by April. I'm going to say April. That's the release date of the RTA, April. I haven't talked to anybody about this. I haven't talked to the manufacturer about this, but it's definitely going to be April. I'm just going to call it. It's happening in April. <laughs> oh, this is a Fibo. Have you ever guys ever seen a Fibo? These became one of my favorite things while I was in the Netherlands. Uh, Fibos, they're kind of everywhere, and they're just, they're like little fast food places that nobody works at. You just go in and you put your money in the little thing and you can slide open the little door. It's like walking into a giant vending machine that serves wonderful food. I mean, they had like cheese-filled croquettes in there. They had sandwiches. They had everything. And as an avid cannabis user, walking around the streets of Amsterdam, feeling real lit, fam, when you come across a Fibo, it's like, Just angels singing to you. Angels just power bombing your taste buds through wonderful, delicious Fibo fast food. Dang. Fibo's rule. So there was a Fibo. Um, just boats, Night River, full. Okay, so let, let me show you this one. This is just a shot of the Rijksmuseum. We went to the Rijksmuseum and, you know, Thousands of just priceless works of art and original original Rembrandt paintings were there. I mean, it's insane. And the outside of this museum is just impressively inspiring. This is my shot from across the street. It's just huge. It's just a huge, beautiful, old, fucking awesome looking museum. They have priceless works of art on the inside, sculptures and, and art from the, from the original Dutch masters. I mean, furniture from that time period, from like the 13th and 14th century. I mean, it's crazy looking at like what is essentially like a dresser for, for a, a manor, like a stately manor. And you go, when was this dresser made? Oh, before America was even a country? That's how old it is? Impressive. It's impressive on every level. The Rijksmuseum was one of the, the coolest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. 
Just one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. And we actually had a view from it from our roof that I didn't discover till later. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the weed real quick in uh, in Amsterdam. So here's the thing: it's not good. Rembrandt, furry messiah, Rembrandt, Rembrandt. Okay, I don't want to talk about art. Rembrandt really spoke to me, man. Maybe it was the cannabis that I had consumed a lot of before I went into that museum, but there were a few Rembrandts and a few Van Goghs that I could not pull myself away from. Van Gogh did this painting called, it's just called Shoes. Go look it up, Van Gogh's Shoes. And it's literally just a pair of galoshes just sitting there and he painted them and I couldn't stop looking at it. It was so impressive the way that he took this black canvas and only using lighter tones of brown and maybe some white just created shoes. And I couldn't stop looking at it. I could not stop looking at it. It inspired me to come home and start painting. Like I'm gonna go buy oil paints and canvases and I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna paint. I am going to paint. Rembrandt, what a, what a baller, what a boss. Rembrandt was a boss. So real quickly before I show you these two other clips, um, the cannabis in, look, I live in California, so we have access to a really great, really fresh, fresh cannabis. In Amsterdam, it's not legal. Everyone thinks that it's legal there. It's not legal, it's just decriminalized, meaning you won't go to jail if you have some on you. It's not legal, you can't, it's not like you go into a dispensary and the very nice bud tender behind the counter goes, hey, what you looking for? Can I, here, you wanna smell some uh, super silver haze? You wanna smell some purple punch? Here, you wanna smell this? Sure, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the effects of it. It's not like that. In Amsterdam, it's still very illegal. It's just decriminalized. Amsterdam has cafes where you can go and have coffee and pastries and whatever you want. Amsterdam also has coffee shops where you can go get coffee, and cannabis, and that's about all you can get there. And the thing is, all they like to do is fuck with tourists. I think, I think that's the conclusion that I'm coming to. All of it's really, really, really overpriced. All of it, the majority of it is all mixed with tobacco. So when you go into a coffee shop, you can order pre-rolls. And you get a pre-roll that's pure, meaning it's pure pure cannabis flower, or you can get what's called mixed, which is how they smoke it in Europe a lot of places. Notice this in the UK as well. They'll mix it with tobacco. They call it a spliff. We're all familiar with these terms. They just take advantage of tourists like you could not imagine. My buddy Adam went into a coffee shop, walked out with three pre-rolls, all pure indica flower, he puts one in his mouth, he lights it up, he takes a few drags, he hands it to me, and he's like, this is just a cigarette. <laughs> it was mostly tobacco. It just tasted like I was smoking a cigarette. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. And these were supposed to be pure flower pre-rolls. So really all they're doing is tourists come in, they want a pre-roll, here you go, here's a dollar's worth of cannabis mixed in with a bunch of tobacco and I'm gonna charge you $8 for it. A tourist will smoke it, get a little bit of, of cannabis in their system, get a little bit stoned and be like, I had so much fun in Amsterdam. When really, me and my buddy Adam, we were just looking to have some quality cannabis and it was really, really difficult to do in Amsterdam. Surprisingly difficult to do in Amsterdam because if you want anything good, they know that they have good stuff and they will charge you for it. There's one coffee shop, I posted a picture of it on Instagram, it's called Gray Area that was like a legit California dispensary. I walked in there, the dude knew what he was talking about. He had all these tubs of flour. It was great. I bought five grams of flour that cost me 85 fucking dollars, and that's insane. And yes, I had cannabis cast before I went into the Van Gogh Museum. I went into the cannabis cast before I went into the Rijks Museum, and they, it enhanced my experience like to the next level. Van Gogh, I felt like I knew Van Gogh after this experience. It's just really poor quality. So 
Look, if you're looking to take some sort of cannabis vacation and you're like, I'm going to go somewhere where I can have weed, go to California, go to Washington, go to Colorado, go anywhere else but Amsterdam because it's all just terrible quality all the time and you have no other choice there but to smoke it. No other choice there but to smoke it. And I hated smoking that much weed. I mean, I did it. I just hated smoking it. It messed with my throat. It messed with my mouth. It was just awful. I wish with all of my wishes that I could have gotten like my volcano vaporizer there to vaporize all of this cannabis. So the cannabis there, it's pretty cruddy. It's pretty low quality. So let me show you this clip right here. So this is street level at our Airbnb. And you go right off street level. You turn around, you go through this door and you're faced with stairs. And you go, okay, there's some stairs. Let's go up these stairs. And they're long and steep stairs. So you end up at the top of these stairs and you end up going down this really long hallway. And at the end of this really long hallway is an incredibly steep, curly set of stairs. It's so dark right now you can't see it, but when I get to the top, that's another set of curly, steep, steep stairs. You make one more turn, you got another set of curly, 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 steep, steep stairs. You get to the top of that, you got one last set of steep, steep, curly, curly stairs. I can't even express how steep these stairs are. And then finally get to about Airbnb. That's my buddy Flitz. That's Daniel. Uh, he goes by Flitz Anu. He streams on Twitch sometimes. He's got purple hair. He's a good guy. And anyway, this was our dope Airbnb. But that's not it. I'm not at the top yet. I'm not at the top yet because this is just the living room of our Airbnb. Very cool living room. But I require to get to my room is two more sets of steep curly stairs. Steep curly stairs. And then you make another right and then you end up at my steep curly staircase to finally get up to my room. And let me tell you, when I was out on the street even a block away and I thought, shit, I left my liquid in my room, I thought, I'm going to have to walk back to the Airbnb and go up like seven flights of stairs just to get this liquid. (sighs) Fuck. So you did it. You just did it. We cardioed all over the place, Delirium. We cardioed all over the city. It's a walking city. We walked all over the place. We walked all over the place. We walked up and down stairs. And then so finally on the last night, let me show you this one last clip and we're gonna wrap this up. This is gonna conclude my Amsterdam slideshow. Thanks guys for attending my TED Talk. Here's the roof. So we had a great little roof deck where Adam and I would go, Flitz doesn't really partake, you know. He doesn't partake in the cannabis. Where Adam and I would go when we were home, up to the top, just to hang out, have a joint. It's the roof deck, you know? So we had this roof deck. And then I realized we should be able to see something from this roof deck. So I like on the very last night, on the very last night, I stood up on like a chair. I finally was like, why don't I stand up on this bench? And so I stood up on the bench and I realized, holy shit, you can actually see quite a bit. You can see all the other houses around us. You can see some some big buildings in the distance. Couldn't tell you what those those buildings are. Couldn't tell you what those buildings are, but you can see some buildings in the distance. And then as soon as Nick flips the camera around, don't zoom in. Why'd you zoom in? That was a bad decision to zoom in there, Grim Green. Zoom back out, flip the camera around, because to the front side of our Airbnb, we could actually see the Rijksmuseum off in the distance. It had been there the whole time and we just weren't looking for it because we just figured, well, we can't see anything. No, in the distance, we could see all this cool shit. We could see all these other houses. We could see all these other buildings. We could see the Rijksmuseum off in the distance. As soon as it gets a little bit more over there towards the right, there's this other sort of big domed building that I have no idea what it was, but we could see it from our roof. And it was just uh, it was just a really cool, cool experience being able to see so much of Amsterdam from our roof. And I only discovered this on the last night in that uh 
that kind of really, uh, yeah, you know, that kind of just really bummed me out. That kind of just really bummed me out because it was really cool seeing all that. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm stoned. I pull my hat up and then I do some weird like baseball hand signals with no audio. I wasn't talking during this time. I just get down and do baseball hand signals. Ready? Yep. One. Nope. Four. Yes. Four. Up. Sideways. Good. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. But guys, I am so excited to be back. I'm so excited to be back on YouTube. I'm so excited to be streaming. This Tuesday Pro Tuesday was a little bit thrown together, but I really appreciate y'all coming out to hang out with me. Dash was here. Jay Hayes was here. Matt was here. My reliable, reliable, reliable moderators, Danielle Jones, Jeremy V., Thomas Crow was here. I really appreciate you guys coming to hang out. And uh, I hope we learned a little bit today about uh, Stanton Glance. And I hope we learned a little bit today about Amsterdam. And if a- Amsterdam is doing something right, the Netherlands is doing something right. I think we have to change the way that we're thinking about things in the United States if we truly want to have like a, a really great civilized society because they've done it in the Netherlands. They've done it. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. It's amazing going there. We need some of that in the United States. I don't know what that means. At the end of the day, I'm a freedom guy. So I want the most freedom possible, but we need to change something. Something's got to change. My God, something has got to change. But we're going to go ahead and wrap this Tuesday, bro, Tuesday on up. Once again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I will have a vlog on Thursday. I hope to see you all back here Thursday, 4 p.m. California time. It's going to be vlog day once again, and uh, I could not be more excited about it. I got some guests lined up, I think, for March, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling pumped, you guys. I'm feeling energized. My time away was really, really helpful, really, really good. I thought about a lot of stuff. I had a lot of epiphanies, many crystallizing moments of of what I'm doing, how I'm moving forward, what I'm doing in my life, like dealing with with family stuff and just life stuff and work stuff and vaping stuff. You know, self-care is something that I've talked about a lot and I'm gonna continue this self-care trend and what I've learned is self-care is different for everybody. So treat yourself nicely. Treat yourself like you you would want to be treated, you know? But, uh, but that's what I got for today, everybody. So once again, this is the last time I promise. Thank you. Seriously, so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the support. Feels good to be back. We're all in this together. Let's let's keep fighting the good fight. Be excellent to each other, you guys. Peace.